Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, amazing law nerds. It is Thursday, September 21st, I think. Was yesterday the 20th? Did I miss load your load your Kindle day? That might have been yesterday. Maybe I did. Today's the 21st. <laughs> we have a ton to talk about today. You know why? Well, I have a fun announcement for the law nerds, and we have lots and lots of Corey Richens to talk about. Things I haven't seen covered. I have the motion from the prosecutors about this walk the dog letter that you might have heard about. Is she trying to intimidate witnesses? Is she just, I don't know, writing a, a chapter for a story? We're going to talk all about that. The defense is asking for sanctions against the prosecution, and they're fighting over Corey Richens' medical records. And we're going to talk about some of the rights you don't have while you're in custody, because apparently Corey Richens was transported to the hospital and then transported back for observation. And there is a battle over getting those records from the hospital that I think the defense is going to lose. So... We are um, we are going to be talking about all of the things, all of the things today. But first, we need to roll the intro. And what we very much need to do, everyone in the chat, is wish Tech Valor a happy birthday. Tech Valor is her handle. Megalina is her name. She is my producer, editor, extraordinaire. We have been friends since I started this YouTube journey, and as my channel started to grow years ago, she was like, girl, throw me a wrench, I got you. <laughs> we need some moderators. And has been helping grow this channel with me since then as not just a friend, not just my tech gutu guru, but also she makes all of our bumpers that you love so much. Yep, everything. Case closed, EDB air, code red, code audacity, all of those are the creativity of the incredible Migalina. So, Tech Valor, happy birthday, girl. I adore you. Cheers to another amazing year. And thank you so much for all your incredible work behind the scenes. I appreciate it. The Law Nerds appreciate it. And sometimes they appreciate it and they don't even know they appreciate it. <laughs> but every time we play We Are Professionals or any of my other stingers, that is the work of the amazing Megalina. All right, so is this. So let's roll it. Hey there, I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst, breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. I'm a big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years, but this is not legal advice. This is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not <laughs> Let's get into it. So yes, we are going to talk all things Corey Richens. A lot of it, again, I have not seen reported in the news. For those of you who are not following along with this case, here is the road so far. Corey Richens wrote a children's book about grief after her husband passed away from a fentanyl overdose. It is now being alleged that she intentionally caused the fentanyl overdose by placing it into a Moscow mule and giving it to him. When police arrived after he OD'd, the cup for the Moscow mule was just gone. There were some sus searches on her devices. We're going to talk more about that later today. Things like luxury prisons for rich people. <laughs> Do you remember this case now? <laughs> Should we call it the luxury luxury prisons for rich people case? She was searching like, can police get deleted messages and things like that. It, it's quite an interesting case. The, the searches really bring it all the way around. So we've been covering that off and on, it's going to go to trial eventually. We've covered the two hearings that have um, that have been in court. We're going to keep covering the court hearings, but there are also all of the other cases going on because there's a bunch of civil litigation going on with the estate of the deceased. And so though she has been accused of murdering him, she is suing the estate. The estate is suing her. So there is fighting over estate assets as well. And we went through that. The chat is letting me know that Stuff Your Kindle is Wednesday to Friday. Today's the perfect day for me, right in the middle. This is perfect for people who are ADHD. You can't just have it for one day. It needs to be multiple days so we can remember somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I'm so excited. I've been very distracted lately with like all the things going on on my, my phone. Um, also very distracted 
thinking about the Roman Empire. I'm sorry. I I am now feeling embarrassed. Like, um, I I feel like I should know more about the Roman Empire than I do. Like now I've gone from like this is a quirky thing happening on the internet to why don't I know more about the Roman Empire? So so now I have found the podcast that the members were talking about last night in the members only live stream. Um I have found a number of books that are targeted, but there might also need to be a TV series and we might have to talk about oh, all of my wanderings for the Roman Empire. Don't worry, I'm going to do Greece after that because I think I um I I combine the two in my brain. I can remember the lyric of every Dave Matthews song and generally what album it was released on and like where I was and what the air smelled like when I first heard the song. That I can remember with more detail, like enough detail to bring you into the moment with me. What I can't remember is basically anything else I've ever learned. So my brain is um my brain amuses me regularly but I can't I can't with I can't with this. So now I know I now I need to know more. Now I need to know more. <laughs> um and I need to find this real quick because I learned that the phrase hell hath no fury like a woman's scorn might be attributed to a queen who took her life at the end of the fall of Troy at the beginning of the rise of the Roman empire. And it, this is a quote I think about a lot just because I think about hell hath no fury, like a woman's scorn for Sega because movie quotes is the other way my brain works. So there we go. There we go. There are all the things before we get ourselves all the way in to today's Corey Richens Ness. It was not, I don't think it's originally Shakespeare, y'all. I don't think it's originally Shakespeare. I think Shakespeare also said it, but I don't think it's originally Shakespeare. So, or at least that's what I'm finding in my deep dive into the Roman Empire. So, with all of that, y'all, we have to, we have to um, take a moment because we have a stream sponsor. I know it happens sometimes. And then we're flying. Then we're flying to Utah stream sponsor and then Utah. So a huge thank you to today's sponsor. Um, also, if you are playing this mobile game that has sponsored the stream before, you have to let me know. You have to let me know. I need to know what day you're on because <laughs> all the things. So I was totally going to bake cupcakes to celebrate today's sponsor love and pies second birthday and i went on the game to get some inspo and look at all the cute little baked goods and see what i was going to do and then i got distracted playing the game and didn't go to the store and so now we're here and the cupcakes are still living in game which is great because love and pies is a relaxing mobile merge game with a really fun storyline plus side games and because it's the second birthday of love and pies there's also free in-game decorations rewards social events and amazing prizes i love how cute all the foods you merge together are but also how easy it is to go through some of the side games and move forward in the storyline and i don't want you to miss the exclusive in-game decorations so make sure that you download Love and Pies today to discover all the sweet moments for yourself. Love and Pies is available on both Android and iOS, and you can hit the download link down below to download Love and Pies and join me. And if you're already playing Love and Pies, let me know what day you're on. All right. I promise I'm going to get back to today's stream and not just sit here and play Love and Pies. Thank you again to Trail Mix for sponsoring today's stream. Let's get back to it. I was muted. For those of you asking, after I recorded that, I did sit there and play Love and Pies for about 25 minutes. <laughs> You're like, I was like, I'm not gonna. And then I'm like, but I just need to finish this. But then there's also like the side game where you build toys. So I'm going to do that. And then I was like, ah, because <laughs> I do that because I absolutely do that. Draco Amy said, I have five notifications that Emily's live. Perfect. That is our goal. Our goal is to have all of the notifications these days. Y'all, we need to fly to Utah and we're going to start with the defense 
asking for sanctions against the prosecution. For those of you that are like, we are just jumping right into it today. Yes, because I want to read this entire handwritten letter and I have a hard stop today. Like an actual, like you must leave the house hard stop. So let's just, let's go to Utah and we're going to get into all of it. All right, this first motion, Emily, is your screen shared? Could I have done that while the Love and Pies spot was running? I sure should have. Did I? No. I'm still distracted by the fact that this week, tomorrow, in fact, will be the first time since Apple has done like the new, the new order of pre-orders that my iPhone is not being delivered to me or I'm not lining up somewhere to get it on launch day. We have gotten to the iPhone 15 and mine is arriving at the beginning of October. And I, I don't know how I feel about this. Like part of me is like, I just need to let it go. And part of me is like, maybe I can find one and go line up at the Apple store. I, this year's pre-order was rough, but there is a new iPhone coming and um, every year. So for those of you that have been following me since I did tech coverage, for those of you that are newer to the channel, you're like, Emily, you did what? Uh, maybe we should revive some of those videos on members only. <laughs> like Emily reacts to Emily making tech content circa 2016. Maybe we should do that. Me being geeked about my rose gold iPhone for the first time. Because this time I am so sad. I am so sad. I am so sad. Um, Histo stuff said perfect timing of app notification, still nothing from YouTube. We're going to talk more about that app notification in a few minutes. Don't you worry, but we're going to do this motion first. We're going to do this motion first. Uh, maybe I need, maybe I need a tech channel. Emily's going to end up going like YouTube school of thought, Peter Milan, and just having all of the channels. We need seven. We need seven. For those of you asking what I do with old iPhones, it depends on the year. I often trade them in. Sometimes they get recycled to my family members. It just depends on the year and the needs of the people in my life. So sometimes recycled. I do not just put them in a drawer. I have one in a drawer and it's my very first iPhone. No, it's not even in a drawer. It's in my background. I have one. I have my very first iPhone that I kept. All the rest of them uh, recycle out of here. I can't have drawers of tech. I'm not a tech reviewer. I don't know how tech reviewers do it. I think it would cause me anxiety. I can't. I can't. All right. Motion to enforce order and for contempt sanctions. Y'all, it's so early in this criminal case to start asking for sanctions. It's so early. It's so early in this litigation. She was arrested in May. It's September. They haven't had a prelim yet. Really would really would be interested in that. Um, and they're already asking for sanctions. This is a defense motion from her attorney, Sky um, Lazaro. Because I think Sky is such an awesome name, I'm just going to keep calling her attorney by first name. Uh, respect intended, because Sky is amazing. Introduction and relief requested. Letter first. No, we're doing that. We're not doing. We're not doing the letter first. We need the background. We need the background. We need all. We need the overview before we get to the letter, Lori. Then we'll get to the letter. I promise. I promise. May thirty first, twenty twenty three. The state filed a motion for a gag order. I love that they're calling it a gag order here. You know who won't make you gag? If you were on the members live last night, you know, you know the answer to that is um. Jiggle wiggle tickle pickle. It's still on my desk, as is last night's whiskey of choice. Anyway, my brain is my brain's doing that today. That's where we're at today. Motion for gag order, claiming that its relief requested was necessary to prevent tainting of the jury pool. Oh, Emily. Oh, damn it. They put gag and taint in the same sentence. I am I might be done for the entire day. <laughs> <laughs> was necessary to prevent tainting the jury pool and protect Ms. Richens' right to a fair trial. The prosecution asked. The prosecution said, we need to limit some things. 
In response to the state's motion on June 2nd, the court entered an order requiring compliance with Rule 3.6 of the Utah Rules of Professional Conduct if the rule tall you rule tall use. If the Utah rules sound familiar to use, it's because it's based on the model rules. And the model rules are the same ones we see in Idaho and everywhere else. It is the same basic non-dissemination order or gag order that we see in Idaho. This one's a little less, less specific. Prohibits lawyers from making an extrajudicial statement that a lawyer knows or reasonably should have known will be disseminated by means of public communication. Same model rule that is implemented in Idaho. These are all from the model rules. Nevertheless, today, September 15th, so that's the day we're going back to, September 15th, the state filed a document titled Walk the Dog Letter on the public docket in this case. Ooh, we're going to get to the public. We're going to get to the Walk the Dog Letter filed on the public docket in this case. Notably, the Walk the Dog Letter was not filed as an exhibit to a motion or pleading. No, they didn't say exhibit I did. Nor was it filed pursuant to any rule of civil or criminal procedure. Instead, it was an extrajudicial statement made for the apparent purpose of influencing the court of public opinion. Such behavior constitutes a blatant violation of the gag order entered into on June 2nd, 2023, which the state requested. Your Honor. Excuse me, Your Honor. The state totally asked for a gag order because, like, they don't want me talking, but now they're the ones talking, and that's, like, completely unfair. Also, if that's true, it is completely unfair. Though I see Sky on TV all the time, she's not talking about this case and does a very good job of parsing between the two. Um, however, I think the letter is an exhibit. So we'll see. Because there can be no doubt the state A knew about the gag order and B had the ability to comply with the gag order and C willfully refused to do so, the court should find the defendant in contempt and impose appropriate sanctions. Excuse me, counsel. You're the attorney for the defendant. So I think what you mean, just reading it in a little bit, I think you want the prosecution to be held in contempt. Are you really asking for your client to be held in contempt? I don't think that's what you're asking for. I think it's just a typo. Uh, I think it's a cut and paste, but it's kind of a funny error when you're the defense attorney. Trust me, it's not as bad as the attorney that called Kevin Hart, Kevin Hard for an entire motion. Typos give me life. They remind me that we are all human because we are all human. We have all made mistakes at work, but legal, typ legal typos are fucking funny. <laughs> and I'm here for it. Pretty sure holding the defendant in contempt is not what the defense attorney wants. But you never know. Factual procedural background on May 31st, 2023, the state filed a motion for gag order with an asserted basis that its request was intentioned on preventing tainting of the jury pool and protecting Richen's right to a fair trial. Specifically, the motion states, um, the attorney's office takes the responsibility to protect the integrity of the criminal justice process very seriously. This case should be tried in a court of law on the basis of relevant and admissible evidence, not in the court of public opinion, on the basis of uninformed and inaccurate sensation, rumor, and hearsay solicited from persons with incomplete knowledge of the circumstances and evidence of the alleged crime. Oh, the prosecution's mad at the internet. I think they're mad because if they were going to play a media game, the defense attorney would probably beat them because it is a game she is more familiar with. My speculation and hearsay on that. In this case, observation of the defendant's presumption of innocence and protection against pretrial tainting of the jury pool should be paramount. Furthermore, at the center of this matter are three minor children belonging to Eric Richens, the victim, and Corey Richens, the defendant. The children should be shielded to the greatest extent possible from the glare of untimely publicity. I think the children should be shielded forever. Shielded forever about it. Um, and that's going to be hard in a high-profile case. It's a high-profile domestic violence case where the outcome of this case is very possibly that their father is gone and their mother goes to prison for the rest of her life. That's that's very possibly 
the outcome of this case, even if she doesn't go to prison, she is still charged with killing their father. She might never have access, access to her children again because his family is going to fight that. So all, all along, this case is absolutely tragic, sure. But then the defendant went and wrote a book about it and kind of made herself a public spectacle. And now it's going to continue to be a public spectacle. The community there in Utah is very involved and very much wants to know. Utah wants to know what the fuck is, what the fuck is up. They have questions. In response to the state's motion, the court entered the gag order. Along with other things, it prohibits the lawyers from making statements. Despite the plain language of the order, on September 15th, they filed the Walk the Dog letter. The state noted in its motion, the public docket is followed closely by both local and global media outlets. Hi, do I count as global media outlets? I mean, I'm not local to Utah. The Summit County's attorney's office has been contacted by numerous global media outlets, including in alphabetical order, among others, ABC, BBC, CNN, Court TV, Daily Mail, Dateline, Good Morning America, The Buffington Post. Who's The Buffington Post? Chat. Chat. Is The Buffington Post a parody of The Huffington Post? Tell me. I need to know what The Buffington Post is. Inside Edition, ITV. I've been on ITV. They're lovely. NBC News Nation, The New York Times, Paramount People, The Rolling Stone, Telemundo. God, The Rolling Stone scandal. We're going to have to talk about that later. Telemundo, The Washington Post, and USA Today. At least four filmmaking organizations on this continent and in Western Europe have expressed their intent to produce a documentary. Oh, God. Four. Four filmmaking organizations intend to produce a documentary. Who's this going to come out first? It's a race, a race to the docu-series. I guess that's the new playbook for a high-profile case, right? There's a high-profile case, and then you have to make a docu-series. You know what I didn't do? Um, I, I didn't reach out to the court because I can just get the docket. We did that last night on the Members Only Live. <laughs> Sydney, thank you. New Dateline tomorrow night is covering this. Mm -hmm. Of course it is. Of course it is. Uh, Net Netflix is definitely going to be in there. Netflix is definitely going to be in there. A quick Google search reveals that exponentially more media outlets have already reported on this matter. In addition to the outlets listed above, these include but are not limited to AP News, CBS Entertainment Tonight, Euronews, Fox News, The Independent Insider, The Daily, The New York Daily News, The New York Post, Oxygen, The Toronto Sun, Yahoo News, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Emily D. Baker. I've, I've covered it. This is the first week after the this is in the first week after the matter is filed. I did not file it, follow it in the first week after it was filed. The state did not follow the walk the dog letter pursuant to any rule of criminal procedure. Further, it appears the state obtained the walk the dog letter through potentially illegal search of Richen's documents, which were stored in an envelope titled Sky Lazaro Attorney Privilege. Interesting, because that's not what the state says about it. So the defense says that these were put into a folder or into an envelope saying they were attorney privilege documents. The thing is, you don't have a lot of um, privacy in custody. And there are procedures for how you communicate with your lawyer. The Summit County, oh, we're going to get into that. The Summit County Sheriff's Office, keep reading. Custody manual includes a clear limitation on search of legal documents. The manual provides that legal pouches may only be inspected to determine whether the pouch is being used to hide contraband. A letter is not contraband. Actually, sometimes letters can be contraband, so I don't think that's just a blanket statement. The state has knowingly violated the gag order. I'm not going through their legal argument because we are going to zoom zoom. The state is engaged in other related improper conduct with which further supports sanctions. And that's, um, let's see, as important and related aside, since the onset of this case, the state is engaged in improper conduct related to the dissemination and production of private records and information. On May 28th, 2023, the state filed and disseminated sensitive information that should have been classified private. The state then initiated text message correspondence with the judge to retroactively address the issue. What? Um, I have questions. 
I have questions. On June 1st, the state and defense counsel shared email correspondence wherein defense counsel explained that the prosecution had produced and filed an exhibit which contained several unredacted pages of not only Ms. Richen's social security number, but also the joint bank account number, and that was a violation. Yeah. The fuck, y'all? Don't disseminate her social security number and bank account numbers. Um... I was I was really really particular about redacting things. So it like this is something that like ruffles my feathers. Just it's not hard people, especially with like search and find, it's not hard to redact things out digitally. It's so much easier. We used to sit there with the grease pens and redact stuff and then photocopy it cuz I'm old, but it's so easy to do digitally. Law clerks can redact things. Defense counsel went on to make clear this seems to be a recurring problem. Please take the necessary steps to immediately have such information classified as private and con confidential and remove from the public docket in the current filing as well as future filings. It can just be redacted out of future filings. It's not hard. Despite this historical pattern from the prosecution, the state continues to engage in such conduct. Namely, on September 15th, the state filed an SDT and return um, for records from Park City Medical Center. Those are now... Um, under seal. The subpoena included the defendant's social security number. This information is clearly private information that should not be publicly disclosed or filed. Those were sealed. So I don't know if they were public briefly before they were sealed, but when you subpoena medical, you have to put in their, um, you have to put in their social. SDT, chat SDT, subpoena ducis tucum. SDT. I heard. You guys are like, I heard STD again. I say SDT, but I do say it fast. I do say it fast. Um, the SDT included the defendant's social. This is clearly private, should not be public. I agree it should not be public. The defense has addressed this behavior on multiple occasions. The prosecution should absolutely not. I realize it might take an extra few minutes of work to file file one for the public docket. Just redact out the socials. The defense has addressed this behavior on multiple occasions. The state has again done it precisely what it has asked the court to disallow. Um, the state's text message to the judge on May 28th exemplifies that it is act, uh, actually, no, acutely aware of the impropriety of publicly filing and disclosing private information as it went out of its way to contact the court on a Sunday to request to seal a private document that it had improperly disseminated. It sounds like they tried to correct it. The court's conduct is worthy of contempt and sanctions. You've asked to sanction the defense and the court. What, what hasn't been asked is to sanction the prosecution. I think it's the prosecution's behavior that's the problem. The court should exercise discretion and direct the prosecution to show cause as to how it has not violated Rule 11B. The court's conduct is worthy of contempt and sanctions. The, the court's going to be like, the fuck did I do? <laughs> that's, not, that's, that's not a typo that you want. That, nope. That's not the one. That's not the one. Conclusion, for the foregoing reasons, the court should issue any and all appropriate contempt sanctions, including but not limited to striking the walk the dog letter from the docket or in the alternative, designating it as private and reasonable attorney's fees incurred in bringing this motion. Okay, let's see what the exhibities say. This is the motion for the gag order. We're going to zoom, zoom past that. Um, for immediate release, this is the press release from the attorney's office prior to the gag order. Exhibit B, uh, that is the standing order. Exhibit C is not populating. What are we doing, Exhibit C? Ah, this is where the walk the dog letter is alleged to have been contained we can see a little bit of what looks like handwriting there so that is where they are alleging 
the walk the dog letter was found. I think that's a conversation that needs to be heard. This is a group text. An ex parte motion to seal two search warrants in the Corey Richens case has just been filed. The prosecution was alerted that this information is public this evening. Please check the docket. Sky Lazaro is on this text. I'm emailing all parties to the ex parte now. Well, at least it wasn't just texting the judge. It was texting everyone involved. The document contains sensitive information about the witness as well as other defendants in the matter. I'm curious as to how that happened. Um... Counsel, after reviewing your filing entitled state's expert witness notice number one and two and realize that the exhibit contains several unredacted pages of not only Corey's social security number, but also joint bank account number. Um, this seems to be a recurring problem. Please take the necessary steps. So that's the email. I appreciate that when this defense team files their motions, it has seemed that each time they have accurately, like, did I read that correctly? They have accurately portrayed the text messages. Sometimes we go through, or the emails, sometimes we go through motions and we're like, but does it really say that? And then you read it. It's like, it doesn't say that. It's nice to see, like, we said this in an email, here's the email, and they match. It's so helpful. The prosecution had some words about this. So we're going to go to the prosecution's words before we go to the walk the dog exhibit. -y. Was it paper served to her while walking the dog? No, we're going to get there. Don't worry. Don't worry. Nikki, I don't think anyone got dog walked yet. <laughs> this is the prosecution's response to the motion for sanctions. Um, statement of relief sought. The court should deny the defendant's motion to enforce order and for contempt. The motion is a fire aim ready reaction to the defendant's misconduct in the jail. Oh, boy. We're starting early with the analogies. So did anyone actually walk the dog? We don't have a literal dog being walked. No. <laughs> the motion contains factual errors and legal misunderstandings, rendering it unpersuasive at best. It also says that the judge should be sanctioned. So there's that. The state has an obligation to protect this proceeding from witness tampering. Bum, bum. Consistent with that obligation and as a matter of necessity, the state filed a motion for no contact order. We're going to go through that motion too. The motion was based on defendant's witness tampering and breach of jail security procedures. The quote unquote walk the dog letter is an exhibit to the state's motion. To be fair to the defense, they didn't file it as an exhibit. Did we, you saw the defense motion where we went through it and then it was like exhibit A, exhibit B. This was filed by itself. So on the docket, it says walk the dog letter as a docket number item, not as an addendum to the motion. Footnote one. Since the beginning of this matter, the state has filed its exhibits as freestanding docket entries and referenced those docket entries by number. This makes a clean record, eliminates duplicates, and is consistent with best practices in complex litigation. Hmm. Look, these might be regional quirks. If that's the way they do it in this court, at least they have a reason why they're doing it. I appreciate that there's a reason. On September 13th, the defendant had a telephone call with her mother, Lisa. The defendant read aloud a portion of the letter written to the defendant by another inmate. Inmate to inmate correspondence is prohibited by jail rules. I mean, okay. No passing notes. No passing notes. On September 14th, the defendant had a video call with her mother. The defendant held up a multi-page letter, or the, pardon, the multi-page letter over the video so her mother could read or photograph it. The defendant did not read the letter out loud. Here's my thoughts on this. We're going to get to the letter. If, no. If this letter contains things that are witness tampering, we're going to go through the letter. If this letter contains things that are witness tampering, telling people to lie, whatever, whatever. When you go to mail a letter in the jail, they are going to look at it. 
They're going to look at all of your correspondences and then they will be able to prove that you've like tried to mail it out. You can't put it in an envelope saying it's attorney client privilege if you're trying to mail it to your mother. If it does contain like, we need this witness to talk about this, she's probably not going to send it to her lawyer because her lawyer is going to be like, I'm going to go ahead and keep that and we're going to have a chat. Speculation on my part. So writing the letter, hiding the letter and holding it up means that the letter is communicated to the person it was intended to be communicated to with in a way that it's less easy to detect except everything you do in custody is monitored every phone call every video call it doesn't matter what's on the phone call it doesn't matter if you try to have phone sex and then talk about your case Everyone's going to keep listening past the phone sex part. The amount of times people try that to dissuade you from continuing to listen is staggering. Yep, staggering. E everyone listens to your correspondence. Every video call is witnessed. I mean, after the fact, but still. Every phone call is logged and watched. All of it. You have no privacy. You guys, I had a defendant who would ask his girlfriend to pee. Oddly specific, yes, the amount of jail calls I've had to listen to in my life is unenviable. He would ask his girlfriend to pee because he wanted to listen to her pee. But I also think he was trying to make sure that we would stop listening to somebody using the restroom. And then they could talk about the case. So... They would, they would have a little bit of a sexy talk and then, and then she would pee and then they would talk about it, the case and, and things. Um, this is a great press question, Dyer. There is attorney client privilege in custody. Those meetings are set up on dedicated lines and in dedicated spaces that aren't recorded. So there are separate procedures set apart for talking to your lawyer and you have to follow those procedures. If you call your lawyer on the regular custody line, it's recorded. You have to, some custodies have a different way to do it, but they have different procedures for doing it. So I am, I am not kink shaming. I'm just saying, I am just saying that is how they wanted us to stop listening. I don't care what you do as long as I don't have to hear it. I, I want to choose what I hear. I want to choose what I hear. So is there anything that would actually cause them to stop listening beyond attorney-client privilege? No. Nicole, Emily, you have to read the letter. We're getting to it. We're getting to it. I promise. I promise. People really think they're smarter than everyone. They do. And the thing is, things do... Um, Things do fall through the cracks. There are things that get missed until later. But it's rare. And with a high-profile case, this is where all their focus is. So their focus is going to be on every fucking thing that she's up to. And if they see her on a video call holding stuff up, they're going to be like, wonder what that is. Later that day, the Summit County Sheriff's Office searched the defendant's cell. What a weird coincidence. Where she's like, holding up paper to the screen. <laughs> and then they're like, we need to read it. Neither letter number one nor letter number two were found. However, the walk the dog letter was discovered hidden in an LSAT prep book located in the defendant's cell. They've left out that it was apparently hidden in an envelope marked for her attorney. On September 16th, the defendant had a telephone call with her mother. This is the day after. And this is after the defense filed that motion. So the defense filed the motion that we just talked about. This is the next day. On September 16th, the defendant had a telephone call with her mother. The defendant described the walk the dog letter as an excerpt from a fictional book that the defendant was writing about her stay in a Mexican prison. The defendant explains in pertinent part, and this is why I wanted to read the motion before we read the letter, because we need all of this information. The defendant explains in pertinent part, 
when I first got in here, I was telling you how I was writing a book. Those papers were not a letter to you guys. They were part of my freaking book. I was writing this fictional mystery book. I go to Mexico and I like try to find these drugs and I'm writing about dad. Like me and dad went to Mexico to find drugs. You can very much tell that the whole thing is very much a story. Then I get in the Mexican prison and I have Sky sneak me in some white strips because my teeth are getting all yellow because all we do is drink coffee in the Mexican prison. To everyone in the chat that has accurately responded to this, sure, sure, Jan. Isn't that a plot line in like, I don't know, Bridget Jones? Doesn't she end up in a foreign prison? I don't think it was Mexico. It might have been Thailand. I don't know. Doesn't she go on vacation and end up in prison? Not a maybe not a luxury prison. She didn't mean to Google luxury prison, y'all. She meant to Google Mexican prison as research for her book. The Google is a lie. Legal authority. The state did not violate the court's gag order. The court's narrowly tailored gag order applies to extrajudicial statements. The state has not made an extrajudicial statement. The walk the dog letter is an exhibit. -y. This is the very definition of a judicial statement. See Black's Law Dictionary. Damn the sass. Damn the sass. The sass of citing to Black's Law Dictionary. It's like the, the lawyer sass in this is like, in case you weren't aware of what this basic concept is, let me cite you to Black's Law Dictionary like a fucking 1L. It's very sassy. Black's Law Dictionary, 10th edition, 2014, defining extrajudicial as outside court outside the function of the court system. Like Poot's press conference, not like a filing. This court has been very clear that all issues in this proceeding will and shall be conducted transparently and with an associated public record. The Walk the Dog letter is an exhibit and a material one, which provides critical justification for the state's relief requested. As a footnote, the motion also suggests that the state violated the court's gag order because filing the Walk the Dog letter disregarded the party's stipulation to produce documents in a specific orderly and formal matter. It's difficult to imagine a production that is more specific, orderly, and formal than a judicial filing. It's also difficult to reconcile the motion's argument that the state produced the letter with its argument that the state produced the letter in a judicial filing instead of pursuant to discovery. Notwithstanding these contradictions, ooh, the state's just like, <laughs> notwithstanding these contradictions, the state produced the walk the dog letter pursuant to the discovery stipulation contemporaneous to filing the motion for no contact. It's bait stamp uh, pursuant to the established document control measures in this case. Bait stamping is literally stamping every page that's turned over. So even though this might be docket number 102, each page will have a bait stamp at the bottom. So you know that even though this might be docket number 102, it's bait page 570 whatever or 1,000. It's like stamp, stamp, stamp. So it stamps every single page turned over uh, to keep those in order Tina in the chat said she uses luxury prison and Mexican prison synonymously. Clearly. Okay. Let's see. And whether the state produced the letter in a manner technically inconsistent with the discovery stipulation is completely irrelevant to whether the state violated the gag order. In another footnote, the motion vaguely raises a quote unquote threshold matter of whether the walk the dog letter is a privileged attorney client communication no, because they have video of her showing it to her mother. So no, it's not privileged. The motion does not indicate how this matter is threshold to determining whether the state violated the gag order. Regardless, the state will address the issue. The defendant asserts that the walk the dog letter is a privileged attorney-client communication because, quote, upon information and belief, footnote two, a sheriff's deputy recovered it from an envelope that was labeled Sky Lazaro, attorney privileged, footnote two. The motion use of upon information and belief here is extraordinarily curious because it highlights the defendant's use of the same phrase in her walk the dog letter. To any objective reader of the letter, the defendant views upon information and belief, followed by lol, as providing carte blanche to fabricate a narrative. <laughs> the sass! Oh my God! The sass of these lawyers. 
upon information and belief followed by lol is like a YouTuber being like, allegedly. That's so funny. As providing carte blanche to fabricate a narrative. Oh my goodness. A sheriff's deputy, in fact, recovered the letter from the defendant's LSAT prep book. Since the motion to enforce order and for contempt was filed, the defendant has characterized the walk the dog letter as a work of her own fiction writing, not a letter to her lawyer. Right, because she she showed it to her mother, which means a third party has been brought into it. And and she she did say it was a fictional story about a Mexican prison. So either way, it's not privilege. Regardless, hiding a non-privileged communication in an envelope labeled quote-unquote privilege does not magically transform it into a privileged communication. There's no magic! Also, the LSAT prep book is, is special. Corey's like, I'm going to become a lawyer before my case goes to trial. Um, it, But it might give her something to focus on. If it did, such envelopes would quickly be converted to devices for circumventing jail safety rules. Moreover, as the motion recognizes, sheriff's deputies are allowed to inspect the defendant's legal envelope to determine whether she is using it to hide contraband. The walk the dog letter is evidence of a crime, which is classic contraband. The prosecution is a little snappier than I thought they were going to be. The walk the dog letter is not privileged attorney-client communication because it speaks directly to the defendant's mother and includes passages about the defendant's attorney not to the defendant's attorney. The, the prosecution's like, words are hard, man. Reading, reading is hard. Reading is hard. Its audience content and purpose are readily apparent. The defendant is asking her mother to facilitate witness tampering involving her brother, seeking to have her brother support a false factual narrative. Even if the court credits the defendant's far-fetched explanation that the letter is somehow a note regarding a fictional Mexican prison, the letter would still not constitute privileged attorney-client communication because it is still, because it is still was not addressed to the defendant's counsel for the purpose of securing legal advice. The addressee is clear from the content of the letter. Snappy. Snappy. The state did not violate Rule 11. The motion seeks sanctions under Rule 11B, which governs four specific representations of veracity that a party presents in the court um, in a pleading written motion or other paper. The defense did not identify or argue a specific subsection of Rule 11B because none of them apply. Nor did the defense follow the procedure set forth in Rule 11. This is going, this case is going to get so fucking spicy. It, we're here. They asked for sanctions and the prosecution is like, you want sanctions? You asked to sanction the court in your motion. Also, you said it was a privileged letter, but it's a fictional story and or witness tampering. So neither way is it a letter to the lawyer. They're just like. Um, instead, the defense simply complains that the not the whining. Instead, the defense simply complains that the state disclosed the defendant's confidential information. Such a complaint does not implicate any of the state's representations to the court accordingly the defense request for sanctions is misplaced regardless the state has acted in good faith with its handling of defendants confidential information the state has filed several hundred pages of documents in support of its prosecution of the defendant for aggravated murder of her husband the state has redacted confidential information contained in scores of documents on a few occasions the state inadvertently failed to redact confidential information footnote three in its haste, the motion inaccurately asserts the state has disclosed confidential information on countless occasions. This type of hyperbole is unproductive. Oh! This type of hyperbole is unproductive. I'm going to start responding to most things on social media that way. <laughs> Excuse me? That type of hyperbole is unproductive. The state is winning me over for the sass. The state's sass is coming through. Just coming through in this. In each instance, the state acted quickly to seal the document as soon as the state learned that confidential information was public. In the first instance, as the motion notes, the state took the extraordinary measure of contacting the court on a Sunday to seal a document. In the first two instances, the defense immediately notified the state that certain confidential information was public. In the third instance, on September 15th, the defense did not... Well, that is multiple instances. 
if there are three instances, they are multiple instances. I mean, maybe they're not countless, but they are multiple. So, it's more than one. Um, let's see. On the third instance, the defense did not immediately notify the state that certain confidential information was public. Instead, the defense appears to have withheld this news so that it could argue for sanction. The motion drew unnecessary attention to their client's confidential information before the state had an opportunity to seal the inadvertently disclosed information. The defense seems more concerned with sanctioning the state than protecting its client's confidential information. Oh, my God. The prosecution is not happy with this defense team. Either that or they're always like this. But this is a very snappy response. This was filed on the 19th. The state respectfully requests the court deny the motion. Snappy. You guys, we need to get to the walk the dog letter. But first, I need to, I need to share something with you. Law nerds, there are over 9,000 of you in here. Nightbot has been sharing with you a new link for lawnerdapp.com. Because we have launched our own app. I should swoop for this. This feels like a swoop is needed. This feels like a swoopy doop moment. We've launched our own app. The app is going to replace the text crew. The app is international. The app is faster. And the app is more controllable by you for notifications. The app will keep you in the loop faster than anything else that we have. It is available on iOS and Android. It is beautifully done by the team. I am so excited for you all to use it. For those of you that have already downloaded it and started using it, thank you. Um, we've gotten tons of feedback from our members to make the app even easier for you to use. The team is already working on updates for iOS 17, and it will actually keep you in the loop. Like, where is Emily right now? Is she live? What's the latest video? The sections within the app are broken down into live videos, the podcast, and quick bits, so you can always find what you need. And it puts you right back into YouTube if you have the YouTube app on the same mobile device. It'll put you right onto YouTube so you can watch and be in the chat. Or it will at least notify you if you don't want to click through to the app notification. It will notify you that, oh, Emily's live. Go to YouTube. So thank you, thank you, thank you for those of you that have beta tested the app. And thank you for all of you that want to stay in the loop and don't want to have to wait for YouTube notifications or Patreon notifications or Instagram notifications because the Instagram channels aren't available in every single country. The app is available. So for all of you that want to give it a try, go ahead and download it. We are going to be expanding usage in the future, but for now, it is going to be your number one place, well, forever, it's going to be your number one place to find my latest videos, my lives, and anything that is breaking. It is my goal during trial to be able to let you know every time a new witness takes the stand or when cross-examination starts or when they're taking lunch break because I can give you more notifications and you have the ability to be like, girl, I'm working right now, I need to turn notifications off if that's what you need. So you have a lot of flexibility here in a way that we don't have in any other notification system. The team took um, a lot of time and effort to build this. We are so excited to have a way to stay in, in contact with you in an easier way. So I hope you enjoy it. Go ahead and download the app. If you want to leave it a review, I think you can do that in the app store. I appreciate you. It's a great way to just know if you're looking for me and if you're looking for what the law nerds are doing, you don't have to go anywhere else. You just get to go there. Heather Lamb asked, is this like our own special Discord? It will branch out. Right now, it's like our own special notification system. It's like an international text crew, but faster, and you don't have to worry if you're on like T-Mobile and it won't deliver your text, and you have more control over how you get notified and when. So Anna asked, do I need to pay? No, the app is completely free to you. <laughs> you do not need to pay for the app. The app is a free app. So um, K 
KM said Discord has de uh, deplatformed others. I didn't know that about Discord. Here's my problem with Discord. I find it confusing when I go there and then I get lost. So I intend to go to Discord and look for one thing and then I end up somewhere else and then I get mad. Wow, calling out T-Mobile. It's been a constant problem in the tech crew, in the text crew, is that T-Mobile won't deliver text coming from our texting app. I think T-Mobile does it to protect their subscribers from not getting inundated with like bulk texts. But it's frustrating when people are like, I want to be in the text crew. And then they're like, why am I not getting the text? And it's like, are you on T-Mobile? I'm sorry. Um, Cause they block it. So I think they do it for the benefit of their users, but it causes frustration. So app notified several minutes before the text, it's going to do that too. The app is the fastest way. So I'm very excited is the app tied to Patreon or only YouTube? The app is not tied to either. It is standalone and the app will put you into the YouTube videos. So you just create your own login for the app and that is it. That's all. Um, so I'm on T-Mobile and it's the most accurate way for me to get notified when we go live. That's fair, but I also, I get alerts just not always in a timely manner. That happens more. So we should see that you guys get the app notifications faster. Um, and I appreciate that. Is it a notification app, not a Discord where you interact with others? Right now, yes. It is notification and it's all the videos live there. So, you, well, all the recent videos live there so you can get out to the videos easily and find it. So I hope that you guys love it. Let's get into this walk the dog letter, shall we? Because um, we've got a lot more to do today. So enjoy downloading the app. Welcome to the Law Nerd app. I'm going to let the text crew know later. I'm going to make a post on YouTube later, but I'm really excited for you guys to try it out and let us know what you think. So yay, notifications. A lot of you guessed that this is what we were working on and I'm so excited. All right. It's time to walk the dog, shall we? Emily, you don't have a dog. I don't, but I have this letter from Corey Richens. That was filed as an exhibit, though filed independently, but filed as an exhibit. Page one, walk the dog, but take vague notes so you remember. Oh, hold on. I didn't want to do this first. We need to do the state's. We need to do the state's motion real quick. Hold on. Where is it? Um, motion for no contact order. We need to look at what the state is asking for and why. We're gonna have to go through this more because we are zoom zooming here. Um, up against Emily's timing issues today. It's a busy stream and a busy day. Statement of relief requested. The state of Utah respectfully requests the court enter a no content contact order to prevent the defendant from further engaging in witness tampering. The defendant is being held without bail. Pursuant to policy, the sheriff's department searched the cell block, found the letter. The letter instructs mom to induce defendant's brother to testify falsely in the matter. The letter claims the defense counsel wants to link Eric Richens, the victim, the deceased, wants to link Eric Richens getting drugs and pills from Mexico to the fentanyl that caused his death. The prosecution says no such link exists. Therefore, the defendant concocts a false narrative for brother to repeat whereby, quote, Eric told Ronnie that he got pain pills and fentanyl from Mexico from the workers at the ranch, end quote. She allows that brother can, quote, reword the narrative however he needs to to make the point just include it all, end quote. The defendant explains that brother probably would need to testify to the narrative, but it's super short, not a lot to it. She reiterates that his testimony, quote, can be short and to the point, but has to be done. Tell Ronald I need him to do this. The defendant cautions Lisa to convey the instructions to brother in person because she worries that mother's house and phone are bugged. The letter is evidence of witness tampering. The state, they allege, the state is investigating. It's currently unclear to the state whether the defendant passed this exact letter or its contents to mother or anyone else. It was unclear when they filed this, but in their latest motion, they said that she was holding it up on the video call, so they now know that. Oh, keep reading. Specifically on the morning of September 13th, on a video conference, defendant held up yet another letter for her mother to read silently to herself. 
that letter was not found inside the defendant's cell. There is a strong inference that the September 13th letter was destroyed or flushed. The state's investigation is ongoing. So they're going to need to know whether she showed this letter to her mother or whether this was like attempted. And then they go through the legal argument. We're going to just get to the letter. So the state is requesting a no contact order, which means they can block who she's allowed to call and who's allowed to visit her. Um, and that's what they're trying to do. Let's go to the letter. So that's the context, all of the context surrounding the letter. What's interesting is me overruling myself. What's interesting is we have now seen the state alleging that she has been holding letters up and then destroying them because then they're not in custody of the sheriffs. If you mail it out, they can keep custody of your letter. And look at what it says at the top of this letter. Take vague notes so you remember. Vague notes. Why would you need to take vague notes? Why would the notes need to be vague? What are you trying to hide? So this is now the walk the dog letter. Let me make sure that I'm not obscuring any of the letter. Sky is saying even if the gummies have fentanyl in them, the prosecutor will say, I tried to put the fentanyl in the gummies so Eric would have them. I think they're talking about either CBD or THC gummies. Stupid, I know, but that's what she's thinking. We will still test them, though. However, she wants to link Eric getting drugs and pills from Mexico, so we need some kind of connection. You guys are going to have to tell me what you think of the wording of this. Because the wording of this is not, so we need some kind of connection, is different than, so we need we need brother to testify what he remembers or about what he remembers or about conversations we've had. It will be argued by the prosecution that this is her saying, you need to make a connection. This is what we need. You need to make a connection. Versus, I need you to make sure brother is willing to testify to the things that he's been told. So they're saying... They're putting this on Sky, the lawyer. However, she wants to link Eric getting drugs and pills from Mexico, so we need some kind of connection. Her private investigator is doing some research on the ranch slash cartel place where Eric would stay at. Here is what I'm thinking, but you have to talk to brother. This is why this isn't a letter for the attorney. This is not a letter written to the attorney. This is a letter written to mom. He was, he would probably have to testify to this, but it's super short, not a lot to it. He will need to tell Sky at the meeting next week. So it sounds to me, tell me what you think, that she is saying to mother, I need him to tell Sky about the connection at the meeting. If that connection doesn't exist, then she's telling mother to tell brother, you need to create this and then tell the lawyer so the lawyer doesn't know that you're creating it because then the lawyer can't rely on this testimony or he needs to remember you need to you need to tell him to tell the lawyer everything he knows it doesn't say you need to he needs to tell sky what he remembers you need to tell sky what you remember is very different than you need to build this or you need to make this connection He will need to tell Sky at the next meeting or at the meeting next week. Upon information and belief, just like they say, she's stealing this, she's taking this language from the um from the civil suits, but this is this does not mean what you think it means. I do not think those words mean what you think they mean. Legalese is hard, bro. Upon information and belief, a year prior to Eric's death. Brother was over watching football one Sunday and Eric and brother were chatting about Eric's Mexico trips. Eric told brother he gets pills, pain pills and fentanyl from Mexico from the workers at the ranch. Not to tell me because I would get mad because I always said he just gets high every night and want um, 
and want help take care of the kids. There are pictures in my phone of Eric passed out on the floor or in the chair. Brother should have texts from Eric talking about getting high as well. If those texts exist, then that's one thing. If those texts don't exist, that's different. Eric told brother he keeps them in an allergy pill bottle in his work truck so I wouldn't find them. How do you know that? Brother never told me about the conversation. Then how do you know? Unless you're making it up, then how do you know? Then how do you know? If any of these witnesses testify, this letter is going to come up. Brother never told me about the conversation. Eric finally told me and asked if, I think that says Carmen, could get him some. Eric never wanted anyone to know he had an issue, especially get caught. He always wanted Corey to go down for him. Oh, so now she's writing it in the way that the brother would say it. He always wanted Corey to go down for him. When they traveled, Eric would put his drugs in Corey's bag at the something right before they boarded. So airport or planes or whatever. Um, that way, if they were caught, Corey would get in trouble, not him. Once they got to wherever they were going, Eric would pull the drugs out of her bag and it would cause a huge fight. She was pissed he would risk her going to jail for his drug use. He just would laugh about it. Eric couldn't ruin his image that he had drug issues, so he would do whatever he had to. Corey has never done any type of pills, didn't like them. If you didn't do pills, how do you know you don't like that? I just have a question about that. Um, rarely would she consume THC, only if Eric begged her because it was a special occasion. Asterix, reword this however he needs to to make the point just include it all. So that part is going to be a problem. Yeah. The reword this however he needs to to make the point just include it all is maybe going to be a problem. I don't think the brother can testify because he's going to be confronted with this. Unless the defense can prove that no one ever saw this letter. The connection has to be made with Mexico and drugs. Brother will have the messages on, will have the messages to prove Eric confided in him about getting high. It can be short and to the point, but has to be done. Upon information and belief, lol. They never found pain pills or fentanyl in my house because he hid it in allergy bottle in work truck and Cody emptied out the work truck within a week, so they were never found. When you talk to brother about this, meet up with him in person. I worry sometimes your house and phone are bugged. Maybe drive down to SL and meet him after work without Bree. Is that brother's wife? Sky has to make the connection between Eric and Mexico because that makes the most sense in her mind. If it's brother's information and belief about the conversation over football, she can use that as a connection. Y'all tell me what you think. Is she writing a fictional story about being in a Mexican jail? Or is she trying to tell her brother to testify? Or is she asking him to remember it a certain way and to tell the lawyer how to do it? Because the lawyers like, lawyers and clients have strategy conversations. That's what they do. But to put that strategy conversation in a letter and be like, Sky needs a connection. Can you make that happen? Is a problem. So if it's brother's information, then Sky can use it. Tell him not to overanalyze it. What, the fact that you're asking him to lie 
or his memory? What, what is there to overanalyze? Do you remember this? I witnessed a really horrific car crash once. I still remember most of it. Like, I could retell you that. But there's times I don't think about it. So it'd be like, do you remember that car crash you saw? And I'd be like, oh, yeah. It's like, what do you remember about that? Asking someone to give you their memory is very different than like, I need you to include all of this, reword it, but don't overanalyze it. The rewording it is a problem for me. Is it a problem for you? It was a quick two-minute conversation. Lol. Is she telling them how long the conversation was? Remember that conversation over football? It was quick. Tell him I need him to do this. Yikes. Keep reading, Emily. Tell him I need him to do this. Bring me home. And then we will get those damn bitches. Is he threatening the victim's sister? I a chat I think code red is appropriate. I think code red is appropriate. Uh, yeah, I think code red is appropriate. Y'all, if you're new here, code red is flashy until it's not. So the music when the music ends, the flashing will stop. But we are going to code red in 3 2 1 cuz cuz there is fuckery afoot, y'all. I think the things in this letter so far that are harmful are put it in your own words. Don't overanalyze it. Bring me home. Tell him I need him to do this. Bring me home. And then we'll get those damn bitches. I think she, this is my speculation. I think she is referring to Eric's sisters. That's my, that's my speculation. Also, please text Lotto or call. Tell him, do not text me anything about us doing things together ever. Like church, skiing trips, nothing that puts us together. It doesn't look good. Who's Lotto or Lotto? Um, was Corey having an affair? Chat? Chat? Now the prosecution is going to want to know exactly who the fuck Lotto is. Tell him not to text me anything about us doing things together ever. Like church, skiing trips, nothing that puts us together. It doesn't look good. We are so close to the end. N lies. Let's push through. Have the conversation with brother before he meets with Sky. Then tell him to tell Sky at the meeting about the conversation. Tell him to tell the lawyer this. Hang in there. We're almost there. Love you to the moon. You're not almost there. Take vague notes of all of this so you remember before you walk the dog. It gets worse as it keeps going. I love that you guys in the chat are like, we don't talk about Lotto. No, no, no. That gets worse. Take vague notes of all of this so you remember before you walk the dog. I've seen a number of you state in the chat what you know walk the dog to mean. Um. Yep. It's not an uncommon phrase for kind of get your stories together. So... But how does she know that? She's going to get convicted. She's not very smart. I hope that she gets convicted if she did it and not because she's not very smart. But if she did it, this is not very smart. Uh, Maria, I have one. I just don't know where it is. <laughs> Dire. She didn't walk the dog. She screwed the pooch. I don't know. I'm asking, could Lotto be someone involved in, in her buying drugs? I don't know. But she, they brought in other informants about her purchasing drugs. And the fact that it said skiing and church and things, I just wonder 
who she was spending time with that looks bad. Because they've already talked to the people that she purchased drugs from. So, <sighs> Steven said, girl, really? It's the changing from third person to directional mid quote fictional story for me. Steven, you're smarter than I am. <laughs> so I appreciate you pointing it out. She does change. Um, she does change, doesn't she? So, we'll see. So now the prosecution, no, the prosecution's definitely going to be looking for who the fuck Lotto is. And I wonder if Eric Richen's sisters have any idea. Because if Corey was creeping around with somebody at church, I guarantee you the sisters have some fucking idea of who that is. Because that's just how that works. All right. Yikes. Let's keep going. I saw a commercial yesterday, Utah Mortgage Relief. Google them, please. It's for people behind on their mortgage. Can you see if they can help um, out on Marissa's house? We have to get hers, yours, and Charles's taken care of ASAP. This is going into practical stuff. Try to go to that place in Camus. Uh, what about asking Lotto to do a loan solely in his name and not have you on there? I wonder if she's trying to move. Speculation. Lawyer thinking out loud. I wonder if she's trying to move the family's assets and why. There are a lot of civil suits going on. She has a ton of civil debts going on. Is her name on those houses? Because if her name is also on some of these houses, it might be a problem because she has a substantial amount of civil debt. Uh, a substantial amount of civil debt that people are going after. So is she trying to hide or move assets? I don't know. Is that the first thing I would look at if I was the prosecution? Well, no, I would look at Lotto and the rest of it. But now we're asking Lotto to help move these houses around. <clears throat> so I got a lot of questions about that. Um, what about asking Lotto to do a loan solely in his name? I know he can do a home equity line of credit on his house in hideout. Who's doing a, a HELOC for you, girl? And why? Corey, why do you think Lotto would put all this debt in his name for you and your family? I got, I got questions. Not sure if he would, but I know he has like a million in equity. Maybe he just doesn't know about the HELOC. If he wants to help me, Taking care of these loans is most important. I don't give a shit about the Yotels. Remember I told you, one way to get it, Katie, is going through my phone and finding a picture of her girls, even with the boys? Isn't Katie the victim's sister? Y'all! This might be witness tampering and intimidation. You're bringing the kids into it. This is the sister. Remember I told you one way to get at Katie is going through my phone and finding a picture of her girls, even with the boys. This is so fucked. Print copies and send them out anonymously to different media companies. Obviously, don't email the pictures so it's not traceable. She would be livid if it got out to the public. You would just have to do it sneakily and be careful. She would try to trace it back to you. Her deceased husband's sister's kids are not fucking pawns in a game. What in the witness intimidation is this? Hey, mom, even if my kids are in the pictures, will you get pictures of Eric's sister's children to the media? Do it sneakily. She's going to try to trace it back to you. That's her family. 
I can't get any code redder. Oh my God, if I was the prosecution, I'd be so fucking angry. And it's like a weird angry because you're so fucking angry, but then you're also like kind of thrilled that if this is what you think of this defendant anyway, they're kind of proving to you who they are. Because the fact that she would ask her mom to do this kind of proves a little bit of her character, doesn't it? This isn't this isn't a prove me innocent. This is a tear them down. Oh my God, her attorney is going to be so fucking mad. I. Oh my God. I, I wonder if the prosecution can trace this back to this being shown to the mother. I wonder if they will seek to add charges for attempted witness intimidation. The sisters have to be gutted. Sky is having the My Girls do the first interview with Good Morning America. Please tell Chelsea to bring up that he hasn't been to church in the 13 years she has known him. Are we trying to disparage the victim then by saying he hasn't been to church? Are we trying to prove that he's like a bad Mormon? Is that, Corey, is that, the, is that really the direction you want to go in? Boo. I don't know. I, I, you're trying to blast somebody else's kids to the media, but you want to be like, but Eric hasn't been to church. I don't, I, I feel like it pales in comparison to trying to blast children. God, this makes me mad. And Eric would brag to her about how much he drank and did pills in high school. Tell Kelsey, underline, to say, quote, Eric always wanted Corey to go down for him. Tell Kelsey to say. She's, I think they might, um, I think, I think they might grant this no contact order. For example, he would put drugs in her suitcase when we would travel together. So if anyone got caught, it was Corey. He would put it in her bag right before they left the house so Corey didn't know. Then when we would land wherever, Eric would take them out of her bag and Corey would be pissed and they would argue about it. It seems like that happens once. And then you know that this happened once and then you deal with it. Uh, this looks like tell. Kelsey to say how Eric didn't care and would just laugh about it and say, well, I can't get in trouble. And if it was okay that I got in trouble, I, Corey, I, who? As if it was okay that I get in trouble. Have Selma talk about Eric in Spain not being able to drink so he was looking for drugs the entire time and explain the drink the waitress gave him and how I called his doctor and went to the pharmacy immediately. Have Allie talk about how the sisters have always been jealous of me. Oh, fucking hell. So she's attacking the victim who she's accused of killing, who is the father of her children. And now she's attacking her sister-in-law's, the children's family, who they are living with? Good, good, good. This is, this is, children, just take this letter to therapy with you and explain. My mom was like this. And the therapist will go, okay, okay, sit down. This is not your fault. I am so sorry. Okay. Have Allie talk about how the sisters have always been jealous of me. Because anything they could do, Corey could do better. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. You're on trial for murdering your husband. What is this letter?
I know, Miguelina. I know I'm bumping up against my hard stop. I'm finishing the letter. And I will, I will, I will be fast. That's why I give myself a little bit of a bumper on my hard stop. We're going to keep going. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to Zoom Zoom. The sisters are jealous because she's better. Being a mom, college, not throwing college in people's faces, Corey. She obviously thinks she's better than everybody. Stay at home wife until she built a million dollar company, a nice house, car, everything she had, they wanted. This comes down to jealousy, money, and Eric's partying that they didn't want to acknowledge and sadly, an accidental overdose. This is so wild. Um, but we see the personality traits coming through. It's like, I had the perfect life. Corey, you were millions of dollars in debt to maintain a lifestyle that you couldn't maintain. Your million dollar company, millions in debt does not equal a million dollar company. See, when it's in the red, that doesn't count. That's on the verge of bankruptcy. But okay, boo. There's a level of like, I believe my own bullshit going on in this letter that is strong. Lastly, don't forget to work on the gun receipts. We want to file charges. You can't file charges. You're not a prosecutor. And let the prosecutor not do anything about it. To use in our defense. Will you buy a box of Crest White Strips, open them up, put them in an envelope, and have Sky give them to me? You can tell her what's in the envelope. I'm sure she won't care. No, she probably won't give them to you. I'll make sure they can't be found in my cell because they're contraband. My teeth are yellow from so much coffee and tea all day. Oh, she wants to look better on TV. I mean, I can understand that. Chris White strips really actually work very well. I love you. I love you. I love you. Hang in there. We're getting there slowly. You're the best mom in the whole world. I'm so lucky to have you. P.S. Don't forget to tell my brother to lie and um, go after those bitches. Fucking hell, this letter is something. <laughs> Anika's like, girl, the crest white strips aren't going to help you. She wants to look better on TV. It's a televised case. She doesn't want her teeth to look yellow. And she knows the media is not going to Photoshop them whiter for her. Oh my God. Sky is not going to, Sky, the yelling that's going to happen between these two, I wish I could be a fly on the wall. Sky's not going to pass her crest white strips. Do you remember when somebody tried to give Murda a book in court? You're not getting the white strips, Corey. Um, I need to know who Lotto is. I don't think this is a plot line of a book while we're talking about the sister-in-laws, you will have to let me know if you think that this is intimidation. Goosebump said, will Sky drop her? Probably not. Sky was going to have a real, a real big talk with her. But defense attorneys are not unfamiliar with client fuckery that they can't control. But uh, I think you should ask Runkle how that conversation goes. I'm sure he's had conversations with clients um, about this. Natalie Lawyer Chick, too. Um... Tra Peter Tragos too. I mean, prosecutors deal with this with witnesses as well and be like, you, you, what are you doing? We have to report this to the court. This, you can't do that. This happens. Um, Sky is privately retained. Runkle said he'd drop her. I love Runkle. I, th I think I look, I have prosecutor brain. I think it's going to be hard for the defense to argue that this was a plot line of a book with a straight face. I think it's going to be easier for the prosecution to say she is trying to blast children to the media to get at her sister-in-laws. She is trying to concoct a story for the brother, and she is telling you all to do it. The big thing for me is how do we know that the letter was conveyed? I, If the letter was not conveyed... I still think you can have the no contact order saying she was trying to do this, but I don't think you get additional charges if the letter was never conveyed to anybody. So I think we're going to see 
this no contact order granted. And the only person Corey Richens is going to be allowed to talk to is her legal team. And her legal team is not going to partake in this fuckery with her. No legal team would. Because then they can end up getting charged. Has it ever happened? I mean, yeah, things happen. But I don't think there's any indication that this legal team is going to get into that. I'm going to answer two questions and then I have to have to go. Do you think this letter may come in in trial? There are a lot of ways it can come in. But there are also a lot of ways where it won't come in. If Corey Richens testifies, yes. If the brother testifies, maybe. If the mother testifies, maybe. It's going to have to come up. Um, It's not just going to be like, look, she's doing this. If she tries to have another bail hearing, will this come up? Absolutely. If um, So in trial, in the trial for murder, it depends on how the evidence comes in and who testifies and whether it was conveyed or not. In other court hearings, not in trial, is it going to come up? Absolutely. The, court, the judge is already going to know about this. It's a motion filed to not let her have contact with anybody because she's trying to get to witnesses in the case. And I, I think there's grounds for that to be granted, even if it wasn't conveyed, because this is what she's trying to do. What an absolute mess. Um, the fucking audacity. Going after the sister-in-law. Man, Utah is wild in this month. They sure are. Michael Toast, I don't think it's insensitive to ask if she's going for a psychological defense. We have not seen that yet. We'll see if she does. This reads like somebody who's very linear and clear about what they need. Love the voice changer. I try not to make light of criminal cases. This is a very heavy and sad case, but this behavior is fuckery, and we're going to talk about it in a more light way. We need a code purple for get the fuck out of here. Sophie, we might need a code purple for get the fuck out of here. The pink in your braids is so cute. I love it. Sounds like she's been reading Joey Arias's play, Jody Arias's playbook. Vile and vindictive. Shh, the bull in the China, sh- China shop. Code blacklight. I need to figure it out. Her boys aren't pawns either. I absolutely agree, Lisa. I absolutely agree. Innocent people don't go after children. It The way that, Emily, the way that you wrote this is so delightful because to me it's giving happy people just don't shoot their husbands. Um, It's just perfect. But it's... Judy, you got this is like, I'm seeing a pattern of behavior. Judy, I read your letter last night. These are going up in the background. I will tell you where when I get them up. Thank you so much. They are very, very thoughtful. For those of you that are not members or did not see last night's member only live, Judy made a a, a robe for our dear pickle. So the pickle is now well-dressed. Very well-dressed. Um... I think she named CL2 when she talked about Carmen. But where can I read her children's book about her adventure in a Mexican prison? (laughs) Fair enough. This new character introduced in the letter reminds me of the dude who helped Murdoch with his failed attempt to unalive himself. Cousin Eddie, who apparently is in the next mini series. This is pseudo fiction. If it's what she wants to happen, no hints of a manuscript plot. So, Anne, this is a fantastic point. Is Corey claiming that letter is for a fictional book? Yes. Doesn't that screw her if her brother testifies to this? If her brother testifies to this, this letter will come in and it will call all of his question into it will call all of his testimony into question. This is what she wants him to say, not the reality. Walk the dog is military slang for form a plan. Get your stories together. Um she had it in the envelope marked for her attorney so she could quote unquote hide it. Richens words, everything for plausible deniability. It's wild. Use a screen name or real name in the app. Whatever you prefer. It is completely up to you. Stopping by to witness the elegance of the divine Miss Emily's cursy words <laughs> with my coffee and learn the subtleties of Esquire Sass. There was 1010 Esquire Sass today. 1010. 1010 Esquire Sass. Is the walk the dog letter anything like burn after reading? You guys are going to have to tell me in the chat if you think it's worse. Or similar. It's, uh, I think it's more direct. I do. I think it's more direct. For all of you who sent super chats, thank you. Um, Casey Cat, I was late to stream because 
A uh, phone call from my Irish twins brother's hospice nurse telling me he won't last. I'm sorry. First thing I heard was it was Tech Fowler's birthday. Happy birthday. We truly appreciate all you do. Casey Cat, I'm very sorry. That is a very hard call to get. Hopefully, we brought a little levity to a heavy day. I hope so. Histo stuff. We have an interesting defendant here. I found a big ass walk the dog line weird and random till a member last night pointed out its military code for rehearsing a plan. We're in for a ride in Utah. Oh, yeah. Well, this case is going to be. This case is going to be something else. Brandy said, great week. I started a soap making business six months ago and started work on my first ever wholesale order yesterday. Congratulations. Finally got my ADHD diagnosis. Thanks to you and caught all the lives this week. Thanks for keeping me company. I am here. Lots of people pack orders while they are listening and I love it. For all of you, if I missed your super chat or member chat, I, chat, I am sorry. Don't forget to download the app. I have got to scoot. Today is a busy one for me. I appreciate all of you. I will see you around the socials. This case is going to be something else. So what have we learned? Corey Richens went to the hospital. Her cell was searched. They found the walk the dog letter. The prosecution is getting a no contact order. We don't know if they're bringing charges for witness intimidation or witness tampering yet. And this case is going to be sassy. We're going to have to do Corey Fleming sentencing next week. Alec Murdaugh is in court today pleading guilty to federal charges. I'll do a real or a short about that later today, but we already looked at the plea deal. The sentencing is going to get set over and then we'll cover the sentencing um, when it happens and see how much time he gets in federal custody and we'll cover those sentencing memorandums. Uh, for those of you asking, Corey Richens will be televised. Yes, it will. So with all of that, y'all, I've got to go. Thank you so much. I will see you soon. Bye. Go download the app. I'm really excited about it. I can't wait. You can find all the Law Nerd goodies at lawnerdshop.com. Connect with me on social media at the Emily D. Baker. And don't forget to check out my podcasts, The Emily Show and the new podcast, Quick Bits, summarizing everything I talk about on my Tuesday and Thursday live streams. You know, when you only have time for just the Quick Bits. <laughs>